Isn't working as an architect fun? Architecting may be a rewarding and creative career choice. Make models, pictures, and renderings with software and construct astonishing structures. Though being an architect entails more than just creating nice drawings and using smart tools. So what's it like to work as an architect in the real world? Hi guys, welcome back to Civil Mentors. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you about the unspoken reality of being an architect. But before we begin, if you are new here, make sure you subscribe to Civil Mentors and turn on notifications to never miss any updates. With that being said, let's dive into our topic without further ado. What comes to mind when you consider the construction of a home or business building? Construction crews could come to mind. Alternatively, you may imagine the huge machinery they'll need. However, a great deal of effort has already been put into the project before the construction crews and dump trucks arrive. Tell you that the design of a structure begins with a conceptual sketch. Architects are the people responsible for conceptualizing and executing these plans. Blueprints represent their final plans. You might also want to note that these blueprints are used by other construction specialists to generate a blueprint for the construction of the new structure. What is it like to be an architect? There's a lot of stuff to go around. There are three distinct aspects of architecture, the art, science, and business of building. Buildings must be useful and attractive at the same time. Therefore, architects must blend art and science. Architects are capable of working on a wide range of projects. Architects work on various sorts of residences, from little cottages to gigantic castles. Large apartment complexes are another specialty of theirs. They could also design skyscrapers, office buildings, hotels, universities, and even hospitals. Here, it is important to note that a building's ultimate use is discussed in detail at meetings between architects and owners. They must ensure that the structure is suitable for the purpose for which it is planned. The owner's preference are also taken into consideration. After that, they can draw out blueprints that construction workers can use to transform their concept into a reality. Many of us enjoy the benefits of our profession, particularly the sense of purpose and accomplishment it provides. Architecture may be a rewarding vocation, but it can also be a tough one. And these times frequently surprise me since the work is usually so enjoyable. If you're a student or anyone thinking about pursuing a career in this field, I believe it's important to understand that no matter where you wind up or if you run your own business, you're going to have to deal with some unsatisfactory work. As impressive as these initiatives may seem, they will always fall short in real life. Often, people ask us to do things not because they are searching for architecture or because they want to help us win prizes, but rather because they want us to help them with an issue they are experiencing. The better we strive towards is sometimes rejected as good enough by others who need just a place to do their work. Just think about it. Whether or not this is a good use of architects and whether or not the firm should take on projects that aren't of interest depends on individuals in control. And this is a contentious issue that will inevitably create controversy. Regardless of the sort of project, I continue to feel that our participation adds value, which leads to more work. Management is a large part of our daily work because of the volumes of information and the number of people participating in the decision-making process. You also have to think about all the people from your own office who are working with you on the project. While many people think of architecture as a creative or technical field, it is responsible for a wide range of administrative functions. In meetings and on the phone, we're no different from anybody else in an office job. There is a lot of emphasis on design studios at most institutions, which is a good thing. It's an integral aspect of the overall design. To make our towns and cities better places to live, we need outstanding architecture. There has to be a lot more fantastic design out there. However, the idea and early design phase is merely a tiny fraction, perhaps 10% to 15%, or even 20% at the most of a project and architectural practice. So what else is going on and who is responsible for it? Many of the responsibilities of an architect involve not just the creation of designs and presentations, but also the documentation, management, and administration of building projects and contracts, the coordination of client relationships, and the allocation of fees and budgets. Experienced architects will be responsible for the majority of the design work, as well as the face-to-face -face meetings and on-site management, most students will spend a significant amount of time on documentation, which is around 40% to 50% of what we do. Documentation and detail are likely to be your primary responsibilities as an undergraduate working for an established business. If you work for a smaller company, you may be asked to switch between projects and responsibilities as needed. 
you will rarely be leading the layout of a project for a long time. Make the most of it if you can. For the most part, a university education will not adequately prepare you for the realities of working in the field. There are many situations when you can see that the client is more interested in a product than in your knowledge, value, or unique methods of addressing issues. It can also occur during or after the construction process when events are wrongly referred to the architect instead of the accountable party. Relationships fall and a lack of respect is visible. However, contractors and engineering consultants may be to blame for failing to see our vision or deeming us silly idealists who overlook the wider picture. It's a two-way street when it comes to appreciation. A project must be completed within a particular amount of time for an architect to generate money. A more time-saving approach to design and documentation is required. Decisions must be taken fast if the project is to stay cost-effective. Clients want projects to be completed on time and within budget. Despite your best efforts, if a project goes over budget or is otherwise unfeasible, the original design may be scrapped without any thought to its long-term effect or potential to be modified. As a rule of thumb, it's best to do it right the first time. As a result, you have greater say in the final design and results. For a variety of reasons, clients may be innovative yet unable to commit to them. Alternatively, some choose to stick with what has worked in the past because it is comfortable. Sometimes you have to argue for a good design and at times even keep the spirit of what was once a good design. But if you learn to engage with a client and grasp their requirements, goals, desires, fears, and limits, this is absolutely possible. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, let us know in the comments if we've missed out on anything. See you in the next video. Until then, peace out.